If you're tired of manually searching for jobs across platforms like LinkedIn, Google, or Indeed, this video is just for you. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the entire automated job search process using JavaScript, Appify, and Google Sheets, and powerful AI tools like GPT-4 Turbo and DeepSeek V3 for job evaluation. This builds on top of my previous video where I showed you a no-code solution using make.com, but this time we will unlock the flexibility and control coding provides to create a highly customized workflow. So by the end of this tutorial, you will have an automated workflow that scrapes job listings, evaluate them with AI, and then writes them to Google Sheets. So if you're interested, let's dive in. All right, so let's start by scraping jobs from different platforms. So I'm gonna use LinkedIn for scraping jobs, but feel free to use um, the same method to scrape jobs from Google, from LinkedIn, from Indeed, from other platforms. So to do so, we're gonna use a platform called Appify.com. Now this platform allows us to browse all the web scraper tools that we can call. For example, let's say if we want to scrape jobs, all we need to do is we just need to call their API and they will basically scrape the jobs for us and then provide the job listings. And here you can see for this list, we have bunch of scrapers. We have the LinkedIn job scrapers. We have the Indeed job scrapers. We, we also have Glassdoor. We also have other platforms as well, right? So for this demonstration, we're gonna use the LinkedIn job scraper. And if we were to click onto this, here you can see there's a three days trial. So there's no credit card required to sign up for free. And here you can see to use it, we basically specify the parameters on where to search. So we provide the location, we provide the job title, the company name. We can also provide the published date. We can also select how many rows of data we want, right? Right? and either on-site or remote. So in that case, I'm just gonna click on try for free. All right, after we unroll into the LinkedIn job scraper free trial, here is what it looks like. So here you can see we have the inputs we can specify here. So we want to have the software engineer for the job title location, uh, we can also specify the company name or we can also specify the published dates. So like I mentioned, we can we want jobs that are past one month, right? We also can be able to specify how many records we want, um, on-site or remote, right? Also the job type, either full-time, part-time and such, the experience level, right? And here we also have the um, proxy settings. So we can also select the location on where the search is gonna be taking place. Uh, we also have the run options, so if we want to increase the memory. And then at the bottom here, you can see we also have memory and free usage as well. So since we have the free trial version, so what we can do is we can click on the JSON. And here is basically the input that we're going to copy to use when we call the API. As well as we need to get the API key. So if we were to click on settings and click on the API integration, and then here is where we can be able to copy the API token. So here I have already created a token, but once you create a token, copy everything. All right, so after you copy everything, now I want to navigate to the job match AI repository, which is the code where we're going to automate this entire process. And here you can see, this is the introduction for the code, right? We're trying to automate the entire job scraping process. We also want to filter out the jobs that are duplicates. We also going to use the jobs that we collected and be able to ask AI or large language model like ChatGPT or DeepSeek to get our job summary as well as the job match percentage between the candidates and the job listing. And then at the end, we're going to add the job to the Google Sheets and be able to use that to analyze the jobs and apply for the jobs. So basically this code does exactly that. And here you can see this is the prerequisites for this project. Um, before you clone it, make sure you have these things ready. Um, I have already showed you how we can be able to get the API key from the Appify account, but you can also need to get the AP, API key for ChatGPT and DeepSeek. And after that, you also need to make sure to have Node.js as well as the package management installed on your local machine. And then I will show you how you can be able to set up the credentials for Google Sheets um, in this video, so don't worry about that. After you clone the project and then install all the dependencies, make sure you fill the environment variables that we have in the .env file. So the process is very simple and I have already created the project for this. So it's literally just copy and paste for the script that I wrote and execute the project. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the code and basically explain to you how each of those steps works step by step so that you won't get lost and you get a full understanding of how the entire process works. Okay, and you, once you understand it, you can be able to customize it based on your needs. And once you clone this project, what we can do is navigate to the repository here in our local machine. And here you can see we have the code, right? So basically, um, you can see here that I have the index.js here. And this index.js is the main controllers to control the entire workflow. So here we have the steps to scrape jobs. And then we save the jobs to our uh, JSON file in our local machine. And then we also have filter out duplicates. And then we also ask ChatGPT for the evaluation for the job match and then write the job to the spreadsheet, right? 
But specifically, we're going to take a look at the scrape jobs. So here you can see I have a service function called the um, Appify service. And here is where we can scrape the jobs. Now, the way how this works is that I have a env file, which I create a variable called the Appify API key. And this is what it looks like. So once you have the API key, you put it here and then make sure you create a .env file. Here, just a .local, it's just a temporary file to give you an idea on what the environment files look like, right? So once you put the API key for the .env file, um, then what you can do is you can specify the actor ID. So the actor ID um, is basically the actors that we find here. So if we were to click on this, you can see that here is the ID, right? So you can just simply just copy this. That's gonna be the ID for this actor. And that's what I did here. And then here is the input. So I basically put the job search input here. So you can see, you can specify the location uh, or simply here, you can see I have the JSON format. So I can literally just copy this input and paste it to here, okay? And basically this service function will basically read from this um, JSON file and it will basically just call the client to run it. Uh, we're using the Appify client, so which I have already installed from the package.json. And once we create the client and pass the actor ID as well as the parameter for the job search input, then it will return us the data sets for the items that it scrapes. And once we scrape it, we can be able to log the information and then return the data. So basically you can see pretty simple. We just scrape the data by calling a third party API and back to the index.js, you can see once we scrape the jobs, we will basically save the jobs into a JSON file. So in this case, if I want to test this thing, I can be able to comment out the remaining steps. Okay. And after I comment this out, I will also mark the use debug mode to false so that it will basically go through this part of the else statement here. And the reason why we're trying to use the debug mode is because when we try to uh, restart the workflow, we can be able to reuse the data that we scraped and saved in our local machine. So with that being said, um, I marked this as false. So it will basically go through the else statement and save the jobs into our local machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my terminal and we're going to run node index.js and here you can see it starts to run the appify actor okay so here you can see we have successfully write all the jobs into a json file you can see right here and there's also an error um, it says the written count is not defined which means that i have coming out the written file uh, or written count uh, variable and you can see here that it's uh, undefined which makes sense um, it shouldn't be a big problem. So since we already have the um, item have been saved, so all we need to do is we need to take a look at this file here. And you can see that these are all the jobs that we scraped. Okay, so we have scraped a lot of jobs. And here we have the title, the URL for the job, as well as the company name and such, right? All the information are displayed here. So pretty much that's all the steps we need to scrape the jobs. And the next step is basically do the filtering to make sure that we ha don't have any duplicate jobs that we will get added to the Google Sheets. So then what I did here is I basically create the Google Sheets, which call the jobs list. And then here inside of it, you can see that I create a couple columns. Now what we're gonna take a look at is how we can be able to connect our code and interact with the Google Sheet API, right? So to do so, we're gonna to navigate to the console.cloud.google.com. And then here, we're just gonna create our project Project. So I'm just going to call it the job match AI and then we're just going to click on create. All right, perfect. So once we have the job match AI project created, you can see that we are currently in this project, right? That's very important. Make sure that you're currently in the project. Uh, you can click here to select a different project to make sure that you're on the correct project. So then what we're going to do is we're going to click here and then click on the API and service and then click on library. And we're going to search for Google Sheets API. And then here we're going to click this and then we're going to enable it. All right. Once we enable the Google Sheets API, we can also be able to create our credentials. So we're going to click on credentials here or click on credentials here. And then here we're just going to click on create credentials and then we're going to select the service account. All right. So for the service account name, we're just going to select, I'm just going to call it Eric Tech. And then here you can see we have an email address that's generated by the service account. So once we create this service account, we will also need to add this in our Google Sheet. And then on our local machine, we will have access to this account. So then here, we're just going to click on Create and Continue. And then here for the role access, we're going to click on the Editor Access, which has the Read and Write Access for the Google Sheets. And then we're just going to click on that and then select Continue. And then here, if everything looks good, then we're just going to click on Done. And then once we have this, we're going to click on the keys. So we're going to open this and then click on the keys. Here, we're just going to add a new key. 
So we're gonna say create new key and then we're gonna select the JSON format. Okay, so after we create the key, um, here you can see this is the JSON file, right? So this is the private key, so do not share the private key. And then here you can see this is the client email. So once we have the client email here, so then here we're just gonna click on Google Sheet and click on share. And then here we're just gonna paste the email address here to grant access for the editor role. So to do so, I will basically uncomment the step three, which is filter out duplicates. Okay, so what we're gonna do is here we are basically first reading the jobs, all the jobs that we have inside of our Google Sheets. And then we're going to um, take all the existing jobs. And the reason why we're sliced to one here is because when we return all the jobs that we uh, fetch from Google Sheets, it also includes the first row, which is the headers, right? So we don't want to include the headers for the data. So that's why we're basically sliced one here. And then once we have all the existing jobs, we're going to filter out the unique jobs. So we take all the existing jobs that we have, as well as the jobs that we found. And then we're going to do that, right? So here you can see we put them into a set and then we filter out any duplicates. And here we basically filter by the job listing URL. So or the job link and it's basically the fourth column. So if we were to count zero, one, two, three, four. So that's gonna be the fourth column, right? So it's gonna be column E and that's why we have index four right here, okay? And once we return all the unique jobs and back to the index.js, then what we can do is we can be able to add each records to the Google Sheets. But before that, we will also need to evaluate the job match. So if we were to click on the evaluate job match function here, um, you can see there's a couple things we did here. Okay, so let me close all of this. Um, inside of this file, you can see we are getting the DeepSea client as well as the OpenAI client. And then here I basically get the API key for the DeepSeek and the OpenAI API key as well. And then we can be able to create the client by using that API key. And once we create the API key, then you can see here, we are going to get the job summary as well as the job match percentage from both the AI models, okay? Right, so here's the GPT version. Um, so we basically using the GPT-4 Turbo and here is where we're gonna generate the prompt. So here is basically the function to generate the prompts. So based on the job data, these are the prompts that I'm asking and you can modify the prompt for the getting the job summary. And here is the prompt for the job match percentage as well. So you can adjust the skill alignment. So maybe less on the skill alignment, more on the experience, or you can also adjust by the location or the remote capability. Um, and then here is basically the job summary or the job data. And then here is the candidate information, right? And then here you can see once you get the prompt, you will basically submit the question and then it will give you the response. And then here we assign the response to the, for the job summary. And then here we also have the prompt for the job match percentage. And then once we get the response, we will assign that to this variable. So that's the chat GPT part. And then we also have DeepSeek, which is very, very similar, right? We're using the same similar style here. We're asking the same prompt for the job summary. And then we assign the value to the results. And then we also have the deep seek response for the job match. And then we also are going to assign the value to the result here as well. So once we have all of these, now we're going to return the results and we can be able to use it back to the index.js. Then we can be able to take the data for the job as well as the response that we're getting from the AI, then we can be able to write it into our Google Sheets. And the way how we're gonna write data to the, our Google Sheet is inside of our Google Sheets service. And then in terms of the Google Sheets service.js, here we have two functions. One is reading the jobs from our spreadsheet, and the other one is writing the job to the spreadsheet. So here you can see, basically we create our off for the Google off, right? And we're trying to grant access to the spreadsheet using the credentials that we store, which we have here. So which is this credential right here that we saved from the uh, Google Cloud. And then once we have the credentials and the off, then we can proceed by reading the data. So we specify the range that we wanna read it from. And here we're just going to get a response by sending that query. And once we get in the data, then we can be able to return the rows, right? And then here, that's basically the reading the data. And then we also have write the data. And then we basically take the job that we want write as well as the response that we get from the AI. And then we're gonna deconstruct the data that we have inside of our job AI responses. And then we're going to append the value that we're going to insert. So these are the jobs data. And here is the job AI responses that we're going to add. And once we um, construct our response, we're going to send a request to add the record to the Google Sheet, right? 
And once we complete that, we're going to log it and then come back to the index.js. And once we store this, you can see we're basically making a call to the Google Sheets. Inside of our code, you can see we are basically um, install the correct packages. So basically that's how it works. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a duplicate of this current sheet and try to rename this to GPT-4 Turbo versus DeepSeek Chat, okay? Or DeepSeek uh, V3. And I'm gonna rename this. Okay, so once I'm done renaming it, I'm going to remove all the records for sheet number one. And I'm going to run the entire workflow to test to make sure that it actually be able to run the workflow and execute the jobs, right? So I do see that there are jobs. So we do have some jobs here and I'm looking to see some results um, being added here, okay? So let's run this and we're gonna clear the console, go back to index.js. Yes, everything is enabled. Okay, so with that being said, uh, let's start the index.js here. So I'm gonna run no index.js and here you can see we do have the Appify actor running and let's come back when there are results getting added to the Google Sheets. All right, so here you can see we have 10 records added to our Google Sheets, right, that we specify. And basically you can see all the jobs are scraped and we're able to get the job match percentage as well as the description for each job. So pretty much we can be able to use this workflow to automate our job search. And then once we automate it, we can use it to apply for jobs and filter out jobs that are not in a good fit.